Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we are talking about performance uh, and success metrics. And today, I wanted to talk with you about visual frameworks and models, uh, even something we could call a pitching and presentation system. So I have a special guest to help me to explain what we're talking about, and her name is Renee Hasseldine. Renee Hasseldine is the founder of Think Wrapped, which is a multi-award winning visual pitching and proposal system. She's an international speaker and the best-selling author of three books, including her latest book, Get Visual. A self-proclaimed weirdo, she loves nerding out on intellectual property and getting excited by visual models and spreadsheets. And so do I. So please help me welcome Renee Hasseldine. Hi, Samantha. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me. I'm really excited to talk about this topic. So um, before we get too far into the what on earth are we talking about, would you just give us like a big picture story of like a before, during and after that explains to us like what this would look like in practice with a client? Yes, absolutely. So um, one of my favorite client success stories is uh, Katie Jane Remain. So she started out, uh, she actually started her career in the mining industry in Australia and uh, she, you know, she reached C-suite and then she decided to go out on her own and become a career coach. And in her career coaching business, she reached a $300,000 annual turnover um, with that one-on-one -on -one coaching. So, you know, she was doing pretty great on her own, but she had big aspirations and she wanted to scale up and go further. But of course, if you're working one-on-one -on -one with clients, there's only so many hours in the day. So um, she came to me and she said, look, I want to start running group programs. I want to run a mastermind. But when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a client, it's very individual. It's like, you know, the client has all the answers and it's very much tailored and personalized to that individual client. How do I take 20, 40, 50 clients through one process when they, they're all different? Mm -hmm. And um, so that was kind of the challenge that she had when she came to me. And that's, that's where developing the intellectual property and actually working out with, with her that you know, we pulled out all of that IP and realized, oh, there is a system. There is actually a process and, and it's consistent. If we take them all through this exact same process, we can guarantee results. And so with, with um, creating her ThinkRap system, creating her intellectual property and her visual models, she was able to then scale her business to a million dollar business in just 15 months. Yay. And so she was using those visual models to pitch and propose so she basically would run a half day workshop which she still does so she runs a half day workshop to promote uh the, the the mastermind program and during the half day workshop she's using these visual models to show her expertise to add credibility to to actually demonstrate her curriculum and and how she works and why it works and so that kind of adds all of those those fabulous things so that actually gets the sales so she's able to have higher conversion rates higher prices gets people in the door and then the models, the IP actually helps her to deliver that mastermind program. So it helps with the sales and the, um, and the pitching, but it also helps with the delivery of content um, through a program. So, you know, and that works for the mastermind, but also with her one-on-one -on -one clients as well. So uh, it really is a game changer in terms of how we run uh, a service-based business and, you know, particularly consulting, coaching, that type of realm, it really, really works well. I agree with you. And I've uh, uh, talked with many of my clients about doing, um, you know, whether we call it like a proprietary approach or a signature system or something like that, but you're taking this a step further. So it's really not, it's not just getting kind of like the step-by-step -step process out of someone's head and onto paper, you're doing something else with it. So what is that next step that you're doing? Yes. So what we actually have is a four model system. So when we pull everything out of, out of an expert's brain, if we take it all out and put it into one picture, it's going to look like what, what I call a dog's breakfast. <laughs> That's a bit of an, I'll give you some Australian lingo here. Yeah. <laughs> My old so boss dogs, say that, so I love this expression. Oh, yeah, you love it. Yeah. A mess. <laughs> right? It's a mess, right? It's, it's, you can't pull all of the information out and put it into one, one thing. One of the key principles in turn, when you're creating these visual models is they need to be clear and succinct. They need to be obvious to your audience what they're trying to convey, right? So I, your audience wants to be able to look at it and make sense of it within a few seconds, right? They wanna get the gist really quickly. We have short attention spans. So if you're trying to put everything you know into one picture, it's not gonna help. <laughs> so what we've actually established with the ThinkRap system is there are four different categories of information we want to pull out. And, and with that information, each of those four categories becomes its own picture. 
And then Samantha, a lot of people then say, well, which one do I want? Because I'm going to, I can show that to you in a second. Oh, well, which one should I create? Then it's like, you want all four. Mm -hmm. So just in case you're wondering that, (laughs) listeners, if you're wondering which Uh model should I create first or which model should, you actually want all four of these models that I'm going to share. Perfect. So there's one for each sort of um, situation or occasion, right? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Renee, how about we just go ahead and jump right to the models and you take us through uh, what you're talking about? Yes, let's do it. Okay, great. So as I was saying, when we're pulling everything out of an expert's brain, and, and this is like, I don't know if you've ever felt like this, Samantha, but for me as well, before I developed this system, when I was trying to pull out information from my own brain, I would be like, yeah, but that connects to that. And then that connects to that. So it's, it's not linear because it kind of like, it's like a web. It's yeah. a mess in there, right? Yeah. Like our brains yeah. are not it's, not, it's not structured like a linear process. Um, it kind of does look like this, this image, right? So, um, and this is a real life example of, you know, we're pulling out things and uh, the technology we have available to us today is fantastic because we can do all of this online now too. Um, so, you know, we use a mirror board. So we're pulling out all of the information. And of course it does, it all connects into everything. Um, right. This is actually a real life client extraction, uh, but that's, you know, so it starts as a mess. <laughs> yeah. And just for our listeners, um, what we're looking at is uh, a whiteboard that has like a million different post-its on it that are color coded, but it's still, it's a million different post-its. And then there's lines connecting because something connects to something and, and it goes on from there. And I've seen this and I've also done this process, which is when you're kind of pulling this stuff out of your brain uh, and putting it onto paper, it at first does look kind of a mess, like a million post-its on a whiteboard. Yes, yes. And, uh, and, you know, I used to sort of um, feel this panic as well and just think, how am I ever going to untangle this mess? And I know a lot of clients who come to us say, you know, they've tried to do this themselves and they, and they just say, it, it, I can't work it out. Like I've tried to do this for three years. A lot of them will say, you know, they've been trying to unpack this for so long. Um, and so hopefully what I'm going to share is going to help all, all of your listeners um, to actually make sure that they can get past this challenge if you like so (laughs) yeah this is what happens you know when you try and put too many different types of information into one picture so you know we've got here we've got a couple of fruits and we've got yes without a no we've got a country and we've got 76 percent that's not even 76 percent of the shape like this is this is the kind of dog's breakfast i was talking about (laughs) and sure this is really obvious and no one's going to do it this poorly but um, the equivalent equivalent of this does happen because I'm gonna with those four models I'll share, you get a little bit of a results model and a little bit of process model and a little bit of a target model. And that's kind of what happens if you try and shove it all in. For real. So this so, is that was a, a, a pie chart that uh, kind of mixes, I would say apples and oranges, except for in this case, it's nectarines and peaches. It's, uh, it's a pie chart that is not necessarily representing things. And I think this is actually a really good example because I would say all the time when I have t- uh, tried to develop um, process maps and models. I'm like, is it a flow chart? Is it a this kind of chart? And um, a lot of times, what I'll be limited by are like the preloaded things that are in a PowerPoint. Or, you know, I, I know there's kind of like two kinds of people in the world. And one of those kind of people begin everything with like the X, Y axis, and the other one begins everything with like a Venn diagram. So, you know, I think the point is like one size does not fit all in terms of visual models. Yes. And, and I really love what you just said there because I felt this massive tension in my body when you were talking about starting with the shape. Yeah. Because that's actually a mistake, <laughs> right? Because well, then probably- you're going to try and fit a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. But it's like, don't start well- with the shape that, that, I mean, that's going to make it harder. What's totally. best to do is start with the intellectual property, start with the knowledge. Let's pull the knowledge out. Let's shape it. Let's have a look at it and then find the appropriate shape for that information. So that's going to make life a whole lot easier. It sounds much easier. Yeah. All right. Great. And as I go through these as well, um, if I forget to say any, if I forget to mention the appropriate shape types for each one, please remind me to do that because, um, yeah, that'll, that'll definitely help too. All right. Great. So what we have is the four different categories and which form the four different models. And that makes the RAP system. So we've got a nice little acronym to help us remember R-A-P-T. So we start off with the results model. So the purpose of the results model is to demonstrate to your audience the gap between the results they're getting and the results that they want. Because what we know, human nature, human behavior says, when there's a gap between those two things, we want to close it, right? So that's what we want to show our audience. This helps to inspire them, motivate them, get them ready to make a change. 
So that's the purpose of this results model. So we'll have a look at some examples, a few different ways that we can do that. Um, so this, this is kind of like your classic hero's journey style of results model where, you know, we're, we're telling that hero's journey. There's a beginning to the story. There's a little bit of a buildup then there's a massive complication and then there's some progress and then a happy ending, right? And we can use icons in a model like this to demonstrate KPIs, the key performance indicator. So we've got dollar signs here for the money and we've got clocks for the time, how much time you're spending in your business. Uh, and then you can use language as well that is relevant to your um, to your audience, to your brand, right? So, you know, here the client's chosen to, to talk about, you know, the growth. this is the growth of a, a, a business owner. Uh, she works with small businesses and she helps them with their systems and processes. So, you know, she's talked about when you start off your business, you're kind of childlike with excitement. And then you kind of re reach this adolescent stage where you're kind of like a bit grumpy about this isn't how it was supposed to be. And then you start adulting and then you re reach a more mature style of business and then you become the director. So, the language that she's chosen kind of works for her. She's playful with it and, you know, she likes to talk through that, that kind of mode. So that's that first one. Awesome. Uh, then we've got here, so Sally is um, in marketing in the tourism industry and she's also obsessed with hiking. So her brand is, you know, all about this kind of great adventure and out in the great outdoors. And so for her with her results matrix, results model, sorry, we've gone with this like it's, it's like climbing up a mountain, right? We can use metaphors in terms of the shapes. So for her, for her clients, building that tourism business is, you know, they start off with a passion, then they get warmed up and then boom, the burn kicks in and it starts to hurt, right? And you can either crash and burn there or if you have some grit, power through, you can reach the peak, right? Awesome. So she can tell her story in terms of what it's like to climb a mountain, but also what it's like to build a business. Uh, and so she can use that. And so the idea is when you're sharing a model like this, the audience mm -hmm. is going to say, yeah, actually I'm in burn. I am uh -huh. burning right now. Like, tell me, give me the grit I need so that I can get to the top, right? And so this is kind of that purpose again of the, of the results model. So uh, I think what you can probably can see as well here is, is we want to use evocative language. We want to use emotive language here because this is an emotional type of, um, of model mm -hmm. and, and storytelling as well, um, especially if we're using this hero's journey style. Totally. And it's combining branded language with uh, really uh, evocative imagery. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as you can see, this is not your stock PowerPoint. Kind of <laughs> I didn't find these mountains in the PowerPoint when I was looking. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, and it, but it's worth, this is why it's worth getting first, getting the, that knowledge, right. Getting, pulling out the information. Getting, that is actually, that's 90% of the work mm -hmm. is, is getting the knowledge right, mm -hmm. getting that IP right. That the IP development is is most important. The graphic design part is that's ten percent. You know, that's making it look pretty. That's the icing mm -hmm. on the cake. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what the clients see, and everyone thinks it's about that. But actually, it's the understanding and the thinking that goes into it beforehand that is ninety percent of it. Awesome. Um, and then we move into the for results models as well. Um, for example, this is this one we're showing here is a psychologist specializing in relationships. And so you, a relationship is not, doesn't uh, sort of track on a hero's journey style mm -hmm. of thing, right? We, we all know, <laughs> we've all had more than one relationship. We know <laughs> that there's no happy ending and that's the end of the story, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you can't use a hero's journey unless you're Disney, right? It just it doesn't work. <laughs> so what's more appropriate for, you know, when you're measuring something like relationships where we all have lots of relationships in our mm -hmm. lives, so there, there are, there's, a, you know, lots of them and, the quality of the thing we're measuring is fluid. Mm -hmm. It changes over time, right? So it can we can go up and down a spectrum in terms of how our relationships are. So we've got broken at one end of the spectrum and unbreakable at the other end. And then mm -hmm. there's the places in between, right? So my relationship with my hus husband might be unbreakable, but my relationship with my mother might be broken, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and so we can talk about, so that's where if you've got a situation where the quality of what you're measuring in your business for your clients is fluid like this. And there's more than one of these things. You might want to go for a, a spectrum in terms of your results model shape. And so she has identified, so these five things that we're seeing along the spectrum are going to be like the major aspects of her program, right? So from broken, then we go to shifting and healing, conscious and unbreakable. No, that's a great question. So actually the results model does not, is not the, uh, the curriculum of a program or ah. the steps, the results. So yes, that's a, that's a really great distinction. 
So here we're actually, um, this is kind of all, this is, the results model is more about what are the possible results you might already be getting mm -hmm. and the possible results you could get, right? It's showing the possible results. So it. it's not the, the third, the third model we're going to get to, which is the process model will be that process model. Got so, it. um, so this one here is, this is more of a giving context. This is the lay <laughs> of the lab. This is sort of, you know, having that, you know, you imagine if you're doing a keynote presentation, for example, this is, this allows you to do some storytelling. Uh -huh. So for example, if you're going to have that hero's journey style, you can tell the hero's journey story as your opening story and get that, you know, for example, with my, with Katie Jane, when mm -hmm. I'm telling her story, I'm thinking through a hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and so, and the same thing, even if you've got a spectrum, which you might, you might think, well, that's not really storytelling, but you actually can, because you can tell a story for each of these um, possible sort of stages along the spectrum. Like I could tell, talk, talk about the story of my mom at Broken, right. I could talk mm -hmm. about the story of Unbreakable for my husband. And I could talk about, you know, other relationships for different, places or you know you might so, use client stories instead of your own is probably more appropriate but you know <laughs> sure but this so this is much more for the potential client to identify where they are on the like the readiness level yes exactly it's to demonstrate the need it's for them uh -huh. to realize they need help got it right without you telling them that they need help yeah 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 so a little it's, self, it's self allowing them to self-assess uh -huh. and say yeah actually i've got a lot of relationships in this healing stage and I'd really like to help them be a bit more, you know, I'd like a bit more of the unbreakable kind of Super. relationships. It's really informative. I love self-assessing and I love something like this that allows your viewer. It's not you selling them, it's you presenting the thing and that they kind of choose where they fit in when they see it. Yes, absolutely. And, and this is, you know, I never considered myself to be a salesperson. Um, and I always had this uncomfortable feeling around the world word sales mm -hmm. and so one of the things that I love about having this system for me is it allows me to just be the expert mm -hmm. it allows me to add value and teach my audience and then the 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 side effect of that is that they buy right, right. so I, but it allows me to come from a place of serving and adding value and sharing yeah. um and not feeling like I'm being you know salesy and harsh yeah it, it's Perfect. a it's to me, it really, really helps to come from that heart-centered place. Definitely. It's more consultative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, again, another example of uh, a spectrum. So this one here is uh, an intellectual property lawyer. So, of course, I know a lot of intellectual property lawyers working in the IP space. And, um, and so here, again, you might have lots of different assets in your business mm. and some of them might be really well prote protected and some of them not protected at all. In fact, they might be really at risk of creating some big trouble. Um, and so that's why we've got, again, a spectrum here because it's not a hero's journey in terms of protecting your property, happy ending done. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is a spectrum. So, again, that's why we'd go something like that. Awesome. And then the third type of results model is a matrix. So if you've worked in corporate, this is probably really familiar to you. In a lot of matrices. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so, and we do find because um, the types of businesses that we work with um, these days now tend to be consultants and we find a lot, most of them are using a matrix style mm -hmm. of results model these days. Uh, and, you know, it, it's clear. It yeah. does what it does, right? We've got our two variables on our axes and then we can demonstrate the stories. But again, we want it to be, we want it to be evocative. We want it to be emotive. And it really helps to be able to think about for each of the quadrants here, what is a story? Think of a really specific client for each storytelling in here so that you can really paint a picture of it. Mm -hmm. so, you know, yes, we've got some evocative words here, erratic and utopia and lost and resistance but actually paint the picture of a, of, an, of a real case study for each of those quadrants, that's going to bring it to life for the audience. You know, when I'm on the sort of audience side, when I'm getting my clients to talk me through their own models, I, I usually feel more of a connection to what they're saying when they can give me real detail. And I feel like they're telling me about a real case instead of just making it up and being really general, right? And so you, yeah. you'd know this from a marketing perspective, it's the same if we're talking about ideal clients or we're talking about if people are saying generally like, oh, yeah, my ideal client is a woman from 20 to 60 and, yeah. you know, she lives <laughs> right. anywhere in the world. It's like Working in companies. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. useless, Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> useless. So if you can really get specific on a real story, even if it's not exactly the, the audience's story that you're telling, 
they're going to resonate with some of the details. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. I really love the idea of having um, the quadrants and coming up with stories for the quadrants because it really makes it, uh, it turns it into something theoretical and to something very actionable. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And again, just to, just to make the distinction again, this is not actionable, this results model. This is again, trying to evoke inspiration and motivation. So if right. I'm looking at this matrix and I'm like, yeah, um, my business is in frustration, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. My team's frustrated. Now I'm going to say, yeah, wouldn't it be nice to be in that thriving quadrant? Okay. The expert who's sharing this with me. Okay. Right. Tell me, how can we move there? Mm -hmm. So I, there's no, uh, my, you know, this is Adam Thompson. So Adam hasn't told me here what I need to do, but what right. Adam's doing by sharing the stories about these four quadrants is allowing me to go. Yeah. I'm in frustration. The diagnose. What, now what? Yeah. And so now yeah. I'm going to listen to the next model. Right. Well, by actually, but what I mean is, is I know what to do when I have this thing. Cause a lot of times I feel like when we have models, it's like, well, just go from here to here to here. And I feel like with a model like this as a presenter, uh, now you know how to bring this model to life for your audience. And so this, you know, they can do this kind of like self-diagnosis thing, which I think is super yes. powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so I would also say that um, one of the sort of hot tips, if you like, in terms of presenting a results model as well, is to try and avoid using the word you. Let's not, uh -huh. let's not tell the client that we know everything about them um, because that is you know, as soon as you get one detail of the story wrong, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get resistance. So, you know, the purpose of this is to build rapport connection for them to feel like you know them inside out and back to front. Like, how do you know my story without you knowing their story? Uh, so do not, do not, do, especially if it's a hero's journey, please yeah. do not use the word you. You want to tell that in first person, this is my story. If, for example, mm -hmm. you are an example of what they want to be. Or in third person where you're telling it about a case study story. Love it. That's a great note. And it's the thing that I talk about all the time. You have to be very judicious when using the word you uh, because it's a very powerful and people can feel sold and they can feel off put by it. So I love the reminder when you're doing this kind of presentation is to avoid that word. Yes. For this, for this particular model, because on the next one, uh, the answers model, we do want to use you. Because yep. now what we've done, so with the results model, we've painted the picture of, um, of the possible results that the audience might be getting. Now we're going to say, okay, you've, you've identified the gap and you want to make a difference. Let me show you the answers to what you need. That's the answers model, right? And so here we can say, you need this, you need this, you need this, you need this. Yep. So as the expert here, this is your opportunity now to, to show off what you're good at, right? Excellent. First, we're going to do the diagnosis of, well, why are our clients you know, not in that, in that top right quadrant, for example, why are they not at the happy ending? We'll do diagnosis, right? These are the obstacles, the problems, the challenges that they're facing. That's, that's your big brainstorm. That's your <laughs> post-it note mess. And then you're going to say, right, what's the solution to all of that? Mm -hmm. As the expert, if they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this, they're going to get the results that they want. They will be awesome. in the top right quadrant. They will have the happy ending. So examples here. So if we come back to Sally with her, you know, if you remember, she had the climbing up the mountain for her tourism industry clients. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, now for her answers model, what do you need in your backpack if you're going to make it to the top? Right. So we've got she needs promotion, distribution, packages, visitors, objectives, gear. You need all of these things. Get this stuff in your backpack. You're going to reach the top. Awesome. You try and get to the top of the mountain without one of these. Then you're probably going to fall over and not make it to the top. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, we can go with this is this is all about what do you need? Mm -hmm. Love it. And um, so this is Melanie Colling. So she's working in um, project management. And so for her, you know, she talks about um, people led and, and purpose driven projects. Mm -hmm. And so for her teams, those project management teams. Um, to be successful, these are the six things that they need. They need a compelling mm -hmm. vision, a collaborative team, needs to be client-centric, they need a strategic plan, clear procedures, and confident leadership. You have these six things, Melanie mm -hmm. says, you will be successful. Love right? it. So as the expert, she's demonstrating what she believes you need to be successful. Now, what I really like about these is that I know a lot of people are thrown off when their signature system, you're saying this is the what you need to do. And for a lot of people, when they want that to be linear, 
that's the thing you were talking about earlier. They want it to be like, well, here's the six things, but they want the six things to be like, first you do this and then you do this and then you do this. And in both of the cases you've shown us, it isn't necessarily um, linear. Uh, I, I would sometimes call it iterative or like these are the pillars that hold up the building, but you can do the pillars in different order. And so I, I like to see these two examples of what a visual model could look like that is for a system that isn't necessarily sequential. Yes. So, well, again, here, so these are like the ingredients. I like to think about if, you know, if you're, if you're baking a cake and you, you've got a recipe, these mm -hmm. are the ingredients. These are all the things that I need, right? We're not getting to the method yet. That's the third model. So mm -hmm. in this answers model, you're right. It's not, there's not an order. It's not linear. It's like, if you, you need all of these ingredients, if you don't uh -huh. put flour in the cake, you're not going to have a cake, right? If you don't put all these six things in, you're not going to have a successful team that you want. So here, yeah, again, we're saying all of these ingredients are important and you need them all at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, there's not the order so much. Um, okay. So yeah, that's another great distinction. Um, and again, so this is our IP lawyer just showing a few different shapes as well. So Again, don't be limited by PowerPoint. Get a graphic designer <laughs> to do it properly for you. <laughs> um, or get my team to do it. Uh, here we've got uh, Dixie Crawford, who is a First Nations woman here in Australia, and she helps people to be better active allies. And so if you're going to be an active ally, you know, you need to face the naked truth, do the shadow work, have human connections, take practical action, have courageous conversations. So, yes, it's not a do this in order Mm -hmm. it's like it, you got to do all of this stuff right and right. it's a beautiful um hand shape model uh that looks compelling and i would i would think very attention getting if you pre present this yeah absolutely and this is probably one of my favorites because her brand was so fun to play with you know you've yeah. got the beautiful dot painting artwork and it just it just made it so it's so different to all the other models that we've got it's uh, very and that's what i love about the models is that uh you know, I could work with a hundred relationship coaches, yeah. but none of their models will look the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's our job as intellectual property developers to make sure that the intellectual property is unique for each mm -hmm. person, right? Yeah. It's crafting and making sure that everybody has their own USP. It needs that your value proposition is what is unique about you. Like this is demonstrating your value proposition visually. <laughs> Right. And it's yeah. got to be different to everybody else. It's, it's beautiful. Great. Um, another different shape. So I guess the, this one here, um, uh, Jan, Janet's got um, care in her uh, answers model. So it's great when you have an acronym because mm -hmm. they can be easier to remember. Mm -hmm. And I love them when they work. Yeah. And, you know, similarly with alliteration, you know, we, we'll have lots of models where all, you know, all the things start with the same letter. That's also mm -hmm. great. Another thing that's fantastic is rhyming. Our brains are kind of funny things. If we have the acronyms, the alliteration or the rhyming, our brains make the assumption it's more true. Don't tell, uh, I don't, can't explain to you why. I don't know the neuroscience behind that. Yeah. But I know that that's what, the, that's what we do. We <laughs> assume that it's got to be more real if we've got that. Interesting. So that can be a temptation then to like, let's always make that happen. Um, <laughs> yeah but sometimes but we can't force it <laughs> we, we can't. can't force it yeah don't start with the word peace and mm -hmm. try and make your everything fit there and then you suddenly try to come up with a word that starts with p and then you end up shoving a penis where it doesn't belong right um, do not do, <laughs> right. right don't force a word don't force an acronym and and make up words that start with a letter that you need yeah and then lose the essence of what you're actually trying to deliver like it's so, so important that the, remember like the purpose of this is to communicate to our audience, to grab their attention, to, mm -hmm. you know, transfer information clearly and succinctly in our time poor, you know, short attention span days. And if you need to explain what the words mean and why they're there, then you've, you've missed the point. Yeah. So yeah, use really clear language that your audience, you know, and, and I'd say go back to your market research as well. Do the market research first make sure you're recording the exact words your clients are already saying and mm -hmm. reflect that back in the models. Don't, you know, you want to avoid jargon and made up words. Unless that's the language that they themselves are using. Yes, exactly. That's true. That is true. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, now this one here, um, this, this is just showing, you know, what it looks like when it's animated as well. So we, we, when we're creating models for our clients, we do animate them because awesome. it's more than just having a, um, you know, just having that static image, 
if we can create videos out of it as well, that's great to use in social media because we know that'll stop the scroll. Mm-hmm. So, um, so having these animated versions of models is also a, a great thing to have. Super, love that idea. Um, and another, another uh, sort of shape choice, I guess, if you like for an answers model here, where we've got the gauge and we, you know, I talked about when we're creating this, we're gonna have, we do the diagnosis of like, what do we don't want? What are the problems, the challenges that people are having? And then as the expert, okay, great. What do I need instead of that? So on this one here for solution focused change, um, you know, Rod's talking about, has your team got confusion or clarity, competition or collaboration, control or trust, imposition or engagement, rigidity or flexibility. So we can show these things are on, you know, it's almost like here we've got five spectrums. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, where could you be along each of these five things? Yep. Um, and that's going to determine, obviously, you want to be all in the green over on the right-hand side if you want to have the success that Rob would have demonstrated in his first model. In the it's such a good model. example of um, of how something can be so simple and so compelling because I've set up uh, um, visuals like this before where it was like, not this, but this. And I would have it like in a little grid because, again, back to the PowerPoints uh, in our corporate backgrounds, you know, you'd have some little boring grid would be like, not this thing, but this thing over here. And here you have this beautiful spectrum of with like the little speedometer for, that goes from left to right um, and pointing at like, here's the right answer. And I, you know, it's just so much more effective than basically the exact same information presented in a slightly different visual. This is so much more, you know, compelling. Yes, because we, we instantly recognize the gauge, right? Yeah. Well, the, yeah. you know, speedometer, we, we know we recognize that. And it's, um, you know, our brains dedicate more than 50% of their processing power to processing visual information. So if we can tap into that, we're going to make things so much easier for our audience. Yeah. And it's really, really powerful. And I don't know if anyone's um, listening has read um, the book Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel mm-hmm. Kahneman, but that's system one, system two thinking, right? These visual models speak to system one, which is fast. It's that system one is a system that when you're driving the car and you see a stop sign and your foot automatically goes on the brake, that's what we want with the, with the visual models. We want to grab our audience's attention with that super fast system one. And then when they're excited, then we can, they'll choose to engage system two, which is where they actually are deliberately choosing to listen and yeah. choosing to pay attention and, you know, making that, that deliberate effort and choice to understand what is obviously more complex because as an expert, what you know and what you deliver in your solution is complex. We need system two to understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can't start in system two because our, our audience doesn't have the capacity to deal right. with system two conversations all day long. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so the third type of model is a process model. And you've been alluding to this, um, Samantha, <laughs> I know, because I feel like this is the one, this is the one, um, you know, if people are creating a signature system, for example, this is the one that they will mostly um, assume that they need first. Right. And that is, you know, it is, it's the process. It's how do we get our clients from A to, a to B, right? Sure, but I, I, I was thinking that this is like, this is the kind of model and that there is only one. And already I'm seeing two whole entirely kinds of models that I've never even realized like, oh, well, that's a great idea. We actually would need that. So now we're getting to kind of like the nuts and bolts, but this is like the only one I thought existed. So I'm excited yes. to see it, but I'm already so, you know, enlightened about like all of the other kinds of models we can have yes 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 so yes if anyone already has a model this is probably the one that they've got mm-hmm. even if they've got their signature system written as a list or you yeah. know in some way it's like they know generally even if they haven't specifically you know written it down they know generally when they get a client first they do this then they do this then they do this then they do that right, right. And if mm-hmm. we do that every time we're going to get the result now if we go back to katie jane's story at the start she hadn't explicitly worked this out when she came to me, but she had a very successful business without it. And then, um, but to take a group through, or if you want to scale, yeah. you really do need to get this right. Otherwise it's yeah. not going to be scalable, right? So this is about now articulating, we know if we do these five things, we're going to get the results. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of process model, it is linear. Mm-hmm. This is the linear one. <laughs> and in terms of number of steps we want to aim for, Mm-hmm. between three and seven is great good any more than seven you're going to overwhelm your audience and they're going to feel like it's too hard so here we have um melanie calling again so if we go to so she's got a six-step process it's linear uh beautifully uh she has the alliteration all of her verbs are starting with d mm-hmm. we want to use verbs in our process model so define yeah. purpose defining right 
discover people, develop collaboration, design strategy, deliver value, direct results. So yes, we've got all those beautiful D words, Mm -hmm. but they're all verbs, right? So because we want to be very, very clear to the audience, we're doing something here. Mm -hmm. This is about doing something. We're taking action. Now, all of these things, this is like the method. If we come back to that recipe analogy, right? This is in the, in the recipe, this is the method. These are the instructions of first put the, you know, put the butter and the, and the sugar in the bowl and mix it up, you know? Yeah. The, the, this is the, right? Um, and so this is, this process model, by completing this process model, you should then have all of the ingredients we've talked about in that answers model, right? Yes, um, yeah. But you might not be working on one at a time through this process, right? This mm-hmm. is just this is just the, the way that you actually will work. So you know, it, it, it often is you know very very similar. If you we work a lot with consultants, um, you know, the first thing is going to be about some sort of diagnosis or or right. at all, right? Yeah. Like it's pretty it's pretty obvious what's going to happen there, and mm-hmm. then you're going to come up with some sort of plan, and then you're going to do some sort of steps, and yeah. then you know whatever you're going to do, right? It's yeah. going to be some form of that, right? <laughs> really. Exactly. Um, so that's where it's very, very different. That that very that's very different to what you need uh, in in that answers model. This Got is it. what we're doing. Got it. Yeah. So it's the difference between what uh, what we need to collect and then um, what the actions are and what we're going to do. Uh, and the model you're showing us these are like um, puzzle pieces almost that uh, direct the eye to the right. Yes, and and so you know for English speakers anyway we read left to right so you know in terms of our linear shapes we want it to go left to right and um, we can also have a vertical um, mm-hmm. that does work as well and sometimes we'll, we'll have both versions of the model for our clients because if for example you're doing a proposal document and it's um, you know a portrait orientation uh-huh. then you'll want the the model to go down so you can fit it in nicely and and design it well right so got it. Um, you know we could obviously turn this 90 degrees and have it mm-hmm. going down so that you've got more space to to lay out the content that you need sure um and, uh, and actually i will say as well less is more in terms of these models too like you know we've got here two words per step mm-hmm. um one to three words per step is that's that's optimal right don't go shoving too many words in here because again that's going to start to move away from that clear simple we want to get the gist in a second (laughs) great yeah um and also using icons here um just contrast to what i said earlier in the in that results model that first one i showed you i talked about those icons representing kpis you know Mm -hmm. like the dollars and the time in, a, in the process model, the icons are just aesthetic, right? They're just there to sort of add a bit of, just, like they're for design, right? They're not actually adding any extra information necessarily. Got it. Yeah. Just a couple more shapes here. So um, I'll just sort of contrast this one as, again with um, Dixie where we had her hand earlier about these are the things you need to be an active ally. Mm-hmm. And now here she's talking about the difference is these are the steps we're going to take when we work together. So first, number one, confront the truth then build relationships, then deep dive, then lean in, then influence change. And so that's in going through this five-step process, then we're going to develop those five things that she said we needed. Love it. And the visual here is is feet, whereas that one was hands. So I love really saying like we take the the ingredients and now we put them into action. And the, 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 the visual is not just the word steps, but actual feet showing the steps. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Again, her brand was just so fun and easy to play with, right? Yeah, very. <laughs> and and this this is the thing is, um, if you've already got a great brand, you know, th- it's going to be so much easier to pull this in to something that's really exciting and, and fabulous. For real. Okay. And then we can use, you know, stepping stones. You know, this is another play on, yes, you know, it's a linear. We're going in a direction, um, but just another way to demonstrate that. So from the hiking to, from the hiking model bringing this, this is the hiking model you can tell yeah. right <laughs> yeah it's I, I love the consistency of it where you have the backpack and then here we have the like the stones in the river and uh, and things like that so uh yeah as you're saying like if you have a clear brand identity then doing this kind of thing is going to be uh much easier and if you don't have one then it's going to probably get fleshed out as you are putting together the models yeah absolutely and then the fourth and final model is the target model this is about what are the benefits, what are the KPIs that we are targeting with this solution that we are offering. Um, and magic number here for the number of benefits is three. 
Got it. So, because if you think about it, if you've been presenting your models and you're standing up doing a pitch and yeah. you've gone, you know, you get to this, this last one, the best thing you can do is have it be short, sharp and punchy. And when you follow my step-by-step -step process, these are the benefits. You get this, you get this, you get this, boom, drop the mic. Right? <laughs> you just want to be like, we, and this is something we learned over time. In the first couple of years, I was still thinking, oh, it was between three and seven, like the other models. Mm -hmm. But actually what I found was in presenting a target model with six things in it. Yeah. It starts to feel like if you're up on stage presenting that, it starts to feel awkward for the presenter and it feels awkward for the audience. And everybody feels ick. And you just kind of like undone all the good work. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. suddenly everyone's just like, you, you suddenly feel like you're, you're uh, on an infomercial, you know, it's two <laughs> o'clock in the morning and you're selling something, you know, and on here's and a on. set of steak knives. Yeah. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, you know, avoid that. Three is the magic number for a target model. If you have to stretch, I'll let you go to four, but. But don't. <laughs> but don't. Please don't. <laughs> so um, fun shapes again. Uh, so Sally's got her flag on at the peak of the mountain uh, for hers. And so, and this is um, Melanie. So, you know, if you're working with her, more money, more time, more impact. Um, Perfect. That's the utopia for any team, right? Mm -hmm. Good. And then for Dixie, um, by working with her to be an active ally, more clarity, more confidence and be the change. Nice. Yeah. And so then these four models together, they all wrap up and become the gifts that keep on giving in your business, right? They are a complete set because they each have a job to do, right? So as I said at the beginning, not one of these, all four. You want all four because you need all four of them to do the complete job. They tell a story together. They weave beautifully. If you're going to be speaking at a conference or whatever, this is the backbone of any presentation that you do, right? Put these at the core of your business. Your life is going to be so much easier. Awesome. Um, now, we all know we make decisions based on how we feel. Results in the target model speak to that emotional decision-making needs, right? Mm -hmm. And then the two in the middle, the answers in the process model, they speak to our rational brain. That's where we're going Love to justify it. our decision, yep. right? So yep. what we're giving the audience is an emotional, rational sandwich. Mm-hmm. It's magic. Perfect. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Results of the target model will speak to why should I work with you? Mm -hmm. Answers model. What do I need to be successful? Process model. How are we going to get there? Super. So answering all the questions, meeting the decision-making needs, both emotional and rational. You know, we really are giving the audience everything they need to, need to make an informed decision in a way that is adding value. Even if they choose not to work with us at the end of this, they've learned something. Yeah. Love it. It's informative. I really like for your marketing to be, um, I, I always want it to be um, teaching, educating, edutaining, you know, providing some entertainment. I, I, the storytelling does that. I think actually the models themselves are beautiful and kind of entertaining. And, you know, when you see an idea expressed well, um, it kind of like is entertaining in and of itself. It like makes you happy to see it done well. I think the, any of those that I would have seen on a, on somebody's presentation, I would have been excited to see expressed that well. Uh, so you're using these um, and your clients are using these in all kinds of situations. It isn't just pitching. So, uh, and you mentioned social media stopping the scroll. So what are all the ways that the models can be used? So many ways. Okay, so you've said social media, pitching, so you sales conversations, um, keynote presentations, you know, speaking at a conference, speaking gigs, webinars, mm -hmm. um, running a half-day workshop, the delivery of a program. So if you're running a mastermind program or if even working with your one-on-one -on -one clients, let this be the basis of all of those proposal documents and then the delivery, you know, the process model is the delivery, right? So it's every single thing you do in your business should come back to this IP. If you do it right, it should be the umbrella for everything. And that's going to streamline the way you deliver everything. And if everything is streamlined, yeah. that's going to increase your profit margin on every single delivery, mm -hmm. right? It, it yeah. really is going to make things better. And, you know, if you want to, if you want to write a book, an expert book, right, yeah. to increase that credibility. I've written three books uh -huh. and... <laughs> it, they they have taken me between two and three days to write oh yeah now that wow. might seem insane but I can tell you right now if you have created this IP first and you want to write a book all you have to do is talk through those models record it get it transcribed and mm -hmm. that is you know I spent so me spending two or three days is me cleaning up the draft of a transcript mm -hmm, mm -hmm. awesome that goes off to the editor awesome um 
Uh, Renee, if uh, obviously when I see this, I'm like, okay, I need this. Uh, and I'm not visual. Like I, when I visualize things, it's words. So what would be um, our listeners like first steps into getting started with process mapping? Yes, absolutely. I would say, um, how about I give a free copy of my book, yeah. visual to your audience. Um, all they'll need to do is, Lee, um, is use the coupon code Samantha when they go to the checkout and Thank we'll you. make sure that the link's in the show notes. Perfect. I would love to read the book and um, to learn more about the models. I'm intrigued by like what shape goes with which thing. Um, although I understand I'm supposed to start with the concepts first and then um, to turn it into a uh, visuals. But as I said, I'm, I'm hopeless at that. My, my visuals are all going to look very corporate uh, and, and not um, a really align with, I think, the heart of my brand. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to learn more about that. And if our audience wants to learn more about you, where should they go? They should go to thinkrapt.com. That's think, like what we do with our brain, R-A-P-T.com. Perfect. Love it. Uh, well, it has been super entertaining to uh, look at the models and uh, it's intriguing. I just also want to um, recommend on your home, uh, the home page of your website where I've been is an amazing uh, video using a lot of the models and explaining what you do using this. And so you're definitely walking your talk in that, as I would expect. Uh, and I think that'll be very informative for, um, for everyone. And I am looking forward to the next few years when more and more people are going to have more visualizations of this abstract thing, these services which we're selling. So um, that's been super informative. Thank you so much, Renee. I have had a great time with you. Thank you so much for having me, Samantha. It's been a blast. Best way to start my day. Uh, yes, uh, upside down there in Australia where it's, uh, it's morning there and nighttime here. Uh, and with that, Renee and I are wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business. Thanks for watching. I'd appreciate if you'd like this episode. And if you enjoyed the show, why not subscribe? Be sure to click the bell to get notified when new episodes drop.